Hey guys, it's Rodimus Primal. I am back on another video, and today we're going to talk about The Batman, R Matt Reeves' 2022 film, and whether or not I liked it, and whether or not I didn't. So without further ado, let's sit back, relax, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and let's transform and roll out. All right, let's get into this. Matt Reeves' The Batman, right? He wrote, I believe he wrote it and directed it with Robert Pattinson playing as the title character. And it's a three hour movie right off the bat. That's going to tell you quite a bit. And it feels like three hours. It really, you, you really feel like you, I knew going into it, it was going to be a long movie. So I'm sitting there myself. I'm okay. I'm going to make sure my, my bladder is empty before going ahead and watching it. Cause you know, as you get older, it's kind of a thing. It's like, you gotta, you gotta empty your bladder out before you watch a long movie like this. Yeah. There are moments where like, I, I honestly felt that this movie could have, could have sped up a little bit. They could have shrunk down a few scenes. They could have tweaked the dialogue a little bit. So it didn't take so long and maybe just tightened up some cinematography in some places. Um, but other, I mean, there was a lot of cool action sequences. There was a lot of, uh, you know, cool story elements. I didn't care for some of the backstory changes. I'm, I'm a big proponent of source material. And I understand that like Matt Reeves kind of took from a lot of different Batman comic books to try and like merge this into one. He kind of took a little bit from, I believe it's year two and, and the long Halloween. And he kind of took a little bit of that and tweaked it into one, long you know you know one really long movie and uh by the end of it i'm like all right okay i i i don't mind matt reeves i mean i, I don't mind uh robert pattinson as batman but i don't care for him as bruce wayne i don't I, the, the character of bruce wayne was basically swept under the rug they they basically stripped him of of everything that made bruce wayne even even the like the the real bruce under the mask they kind of took that away from this whereas pattinson in the mask as batman fantastic he like embodies the role really well the fight sequences are, are done pretty pretty awesome i will say that like there's a lot of really cool uh action sequences there's one that's done like completely in the dark and all you can see is machine gun fire as like fighting is happening and then there's another shot where you know like there's a lot of like dark elements but that's kind of something that's going on with this city i understand like gotham city is supposed to be a character but it was raining all the time and you you felt that the city was raining all the time and it just feels very dark and grim whereas like i believe the nolan trilogy there were a lot of shots during the day that even though it's taking place in a city that's like high crime like chicago or you know today's new york city um that this gotham city feels like a like a like you know it's it's raining so much that it almost it, it's 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 where all the dark uh gothic elements of gotham city are there and that's not a bad thing the batmobile is awesome that is that is one of the highlights to the film is the actual batmobile itself like the cool maneuverability that it has and you know obviously it's you know can withstand machine gun fire and the actual chase sequence is pretty cool. Colin Fail Colin Farrell in the role of Penguin though, he kind of takes me out of it. Like I I I hate to say this because he acted his butt off as a mob boss. He was a great mid-level mob boss. That's what he was to Carmine Carmine Falcone, who was played by Chan Toro, who again he both of them acted their socks off and both of them played their roles really well. But I was like, <clears throat> I, I wanted, I, it was raining all the time. Where is the penguin's umbrellas? <laughs> I understand you're kind of going for the more modern take on the penguin where he sits in a nightclub all day. But he's supposed to be a little bit more of a fantastical villain. He needed to have his 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 umbrellas. What makes him the penguin? Like, <laughs> you know, a penguins, the whole idea behind a penguin and why the reason why the villain is who he is is that he, not only does he have the umbrellas, but he also he kind of looks like and walks like a penguin, hence the top hat and tuxedo. Didn't really look and feel like to me like this was the penguin. The only time he ever felt like that to me was there's a sequence where he's handcuffed and his both his hands and his feet. And that's the only time you're seeing him as waddling like the penguin. Like, eh, it just doesn't feel right. You know, it kind of felt a little bit forced there in that, that particular element. The Riddler as a villain, though, throughout the film, 
I really, really dug him as a villain. They did a pretty good job of that. Where, like, all of the mystery and intrigue is all of the stuff that he's leaving clues for. And Batman's trying to figure it out. And as a detective story, it did a pretty good job of that. Really trying to figure out, like, what is all this this stuff about about the Riddler? And how can we catch him? And how can we stop him? And there was a couple of moments in the movie where Batman actually, you know, has... You could see a parallel between him and another character. Uh, a small boy who had lost his father... And you'll know exactly what I'm talking about in the film. And as he, he, you see that and you're like, how come there's no connection? There needs to be some connection there. And we need to not only see it from just looking at him, there needs to be a little bit more talk. This is what I was talking about with Robert Pattinson playing Bruce Wayne. He isn't playing Bruce Wayne. He's playing Batman. And Bruce Wayne is an afterthought in this movie. And I did not care for that because there needed to be some some more balance. They could never seem to get that right in a lot of these movies is trying to get do both. You know, trying to get both characters, the alter ego behind one of them. Like, of course, Batman always sees himself as Batman. He, you know, Bruce Wayne, there is a facade Bruce Wayne and the real Bruce Wayne. And then there's Batman. And he's supposed to be able to do all three. And that's kind of like what you have to take at it. Like, that's one of the things that the Nolan trilogy, I think, did pretty well in my opinion, was that there was, like, all three. And where could that, that lead to? Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. I think she did a great job. I think as Catwoman throughout the film, I really felt like she embodied the character, you know, extraordinarily well. She only The only thing issue that I had with her role as Catwoman was... She had a really cringy line of dialogue, and then, of course, she's willing to take things a little bit too far, but that kind of goes with her character, in a sense. But also, she's supposed to be just as much of a villain as she is supposed to be a love interest for Batman. You can't take that away from, from Catwoman and not make her a villain, per se, at the same time, so that Batman is struggling with, hey, I like you, but you're doing wrong things. Do I draw the, do I, do I make the line? How much, how gray can you make that line? And pretty much like what she's doing, she kind of should be behind bars, like any criminal element of the city. Like Batman would kiss her and then cuff her. That's what, that's what Batman, what I would imagine Batman would do. And he doesn't quite do that here. It's, it's, there is a, a, a line of, you know, there's a there's too much gray there with Batman, and I'm I'm not I'm not a big fan of that uh, overall. But again, she does embody the role really well. I love the action sequences that she's in. Um, it seems like this is just as much of a year one for her as it is a year two for Batman, because this is supposed to be a year two Batman. He's already been working with Jim Gordon. He's already been working with the cops. Um, but she does have a cringe line of dialogue. But there's also uh, an element in the movie where Batman really, it, it took me out of the movie. There's a moment in the movie where he has to fight off a whole, whole you know, he's basically in, in a cage and he has to fight a bunch of cops at the same time. And that took me out of the movie. It really did. Because as good as Batman is, there's just this, I don't know, like it, like you're going to tell me that he's knocked out and he's brought back to the precinct and they didn't unmask him beforehand. Like, that, that didn't seem right. And also the fact that he let, you know, Catwoman kind of go in, in, in that way, that didn't sit well with me either, but I get it. Um, now, the other thing with this movie is that it, like, with its three-hour runtime, it literally has three climaxes. There are three moments in the movie where you feel like this is the end, they're ending it here. Okay, we're going to get ready to wrap it up. We can all go to the bathroom now. Has it been three hours yet? No, it hasn't been three hours yet. It's only been like two hours and two hours and 15 minutes. And the first climax happens. And then it's like another 20 minutes after that. And, you know, there's another what seems to be an ending happens there. And then the movie continues on and has a whole nother thing that happens and lasts for another 20 minutes. And that keeps on going. And I, I was just like, really? Ugh. And 
if I would have been fine with the three climaxes if they shortened it up, if they tightened it up. Um, I never forget. I, I I saw one director in his in his commentary of a movie, and he said that you know when this original cut was like you know for his the the particular movie that he was he was uh, talking about, he's like the original cut for this movie was two hours and forty five minutes, and we cut it down to just a little over two hours because there was just so many scenes that were just taking too long, were too much exposition, just really took forever to get anywhere. And, and that's how I felt with this movie. This movie needed to cut a lot of sequences. A lot of the photography just could have been tightened up in a lot of places. And, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of beautiful shots. The Batmobile, the whole action sequence with that, the fight sequences uh, overall. Um, but that's the thing. This movie just ran too long. It just, it, it you could have cut, it's certain parts in, in the scenes overall that they could have just pulled out and or reworked to be a little bit shorter a little bit tighter and they could have ended up making this movie two and a half hours and i you wouldn't have you would have felt a little bit more satisfied you would have it wouldn't have been so long and and and, and egregious you would have, it just that's how it felt to me now as for music i really do want to talk about the score in this film because there's that one thing about batman ever since i mean really actually every single batman movie has had a theme song to it, right? Like, so you had the 1960s Batman, which is always a, the na 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 Batman. And oh, there's something else I want to talk about, but I'll get into that after the music. Um, the other thing was, is the Danny, Danny Elfman's theme, which is like the na 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 na, which is also used in Batman the Animated Series, which, by the way, Batman the Animated Series, Mask of the Phantasm, ranks up there like super high in, on my list as far as Batman films is concerned. Um, but, and, and 89 Batman too. But the Dark Knight trilogy also had like that that instrumental music, which was phenomenal and awesome in all three of those movies, you know, especially the Dark Knight theme. Um, I think it's Molossus, I think is the name of the tune in in uh in the in the Dark Knight trilogy that everybody remembers and always hears that tune. They go, Oh yeah, that's Batman from from the Dark Knight trilogy. This one had what seemed to be it took elements from Star Wars, like The Empire Strikes Back and merged it with the Danny Elfman theme and like put them together and you'll hear it and you're kind of go like I'm thinking I'm thinking this is like uh Rogue One or this is like the Empire Strikes Back or the Imperial March and then I'm hearing I'm hearing a little bit of that Danny Elfman theme in there but it's going in a different direction that's the whole time I'm watching it that's how I felt as throughout the entire film that this was kind of like its own take on that theme in a totally different way and it actually worked it really worked throughout the film whenever the bat that batman theme ran i was in it i was totally in it but the biggest problem i had and you'll know exactly what i'm talking about he does not call himself batman he calls himself vengeance Hey there, Mr. Vengeance. He's never, he only calls himself Batman once in the movie. Once. Once. And every other time, it's vengeance. He's vengeance. That's who, no, no, that's the, that's the thing that the Batman animated series, so like, it was like literally taking from the Batman animated series and saying, I am vengeance, I am the knight, I am Batman, and, and, and applying that to the very typical, and we're expecting to see it, like, kind of like, say the thing, say the thing, very much like, uh, you know, like the, I didn't do it, boy. You're, you're expecting him to say, I'm Batman, but instead he says, I'm vengeance. And I'm like, what? That doesn't make any sense. The Penguin even calls him that. And I'm like, no, 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 it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. There's a couple of different characters that they change their backstory and when they changed their backstory, I was not a fan of it overall. And I was kind of disappointed, really disappointed in that. Because now you have eliminated another, a couple of other characters in the Batman universe from this, like, from this universe. So to give an example, Kathy Kane is supposed to be a relative, is supposed to be Martha uh, Wayne's niece right? So Bruce's cousin, right? Now you can't quite have that because the backstory has changed. I'm not going to spoil it for you because it's, it's good. You'll understand exactly what I'm talking about, but that particular one really got on my nerves. And because a lot of people are going to, you know, if they 
put two and two together when you will when you change backstories and this is why i'm a big proponent of source material on any medium when you change source material you uh, you have to take into the uh, take into consideration the implication of other characters if you decide to continue the franchise because now you have to work out that 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 thing that made that character who they were and and their connections and you 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 there's too many threads when you make changes like that you can't just make willy-nilly changes i'm a I, you have to keep continuity in some aspect of it especially when this is supposed to be like the new way that they're moving the batman universe forward is that they're going to have this movie they want to do probably other batman movies and since they're re they're rewinding the batman universe after i guess the flash is going to have a movie and they're going to end up eliminating everything that happened before this movie or something it's going to be some weird stuff happening right um so at the end of the day, did I hate the movie? No, no, I didn't hate the movie. I'm giving you guys my grievances as well as, like, there are a lot of stuff that I really liked. Like, there's a lot of, lot of cool sequences in the movie. The movie just ran long. And it was, like, it was very, very boring at parts. And there were so many people who were like, I wasn't bored at all. I wasn't bored at all. Well, I was. I was. And I the, my, my attention was not where it was supposed to be. I'm like, I wanted to pick up my phone and look at my phone at some points. And I wanted to like look something up. I just I didn't want to sit and watch the movie anymore at certain points. And then it got me back into it. And then that it was a lot of like too many low valleys in the film, a lot of boring parts. But overall, should you see this movie? If you're a Batman fan, yes, absolutely. Um, you may love it. You may hate it. I for me, I'm middle of the road with it. You know, it was boring at parts. It was really fun at parts. But at the end of the day. It's a Batman movie. You're expecting a good detective story, and this kind of gives it to you. So, but I want to know what you guys think. Did you enjoy the Batman? Have you seen it? Of course, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to thumbs up this video and subscribe. Check out my other videos as well. I have uh, a lot more videos I'm going to actually be bringing back to this channel. Uh, I'm going to start doing Godzilla reviews. I got to rewatch Cobra Kai season four again and kind of give you guys a review for that. And I got some more stuff too. Uh, coming down the pipeline so uh as always guys until next time till all are one